direct a movie just because Steven Spielberg's my dad. Pfft, I'd rather work at a, uh, at a shop right. Yeah. Nobody, nobody would like say that. I feel like they tend to think that that's what they will be like in like ninth grade. Mm. And then by junior, by like sophomore year of college, it's like, I'm actually going to take whatever I can get. I mean mm. that's so fair. That's all yeah, of us. Yeah. Right? No, it would be. I would be madder at them if they were like, "No, I need to do this on my own blood, sweat, and tears." That's what I'm saying. Like, who, who is actually giving flack to nepotism babies who like use it to their advantage? Like, it would be so much worse. No, I don't actually give flack to anyone. I, yeah, I mean, I think the system is fucked up. Yeah, it is. Well, it's it's, it's not the kids' fault. Well, yeah, it's all like networking. So if your parents are already in the network, you're just given a, a, a little pass. Yeah. I will say one person who I am for sure would be as successful as they would be had they not had their uh, parents is Jamie Lee Curtis. I think Jamie, oh, Lee, Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis' parents. Oh, Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. Oh, shit. Do you Lee know Lee Curtis? <laughs> Obviously. <Duh. laughs> We could. I feel like Did we could. Did you even said go to any- Yale? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> wow. Claire is the Rachel Doll is all of going to Yale. Oh, no. <laughs> They're faking it. Is Yale my brand? I don't think Yale is your brand. Okay. Oh, Do we're gonna think- make it your brand, whether you like it or not. No, I promise. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you think Yale is your brand? I sure hope not. People tend to tell me t- that they're surprised to learn that, and I would like to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you were at Yale, yeah, yeah. people in your class were like, like, "I thought you here? just hung around." <laughs> 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 you're not just auditing this your lecture? professor are like aren't you just here for the vibes yeah. just like <laughs> you turn in a final paper they're like you didn't really have to do this uh people auditing from the community college don't have to oh you go here <laughs> oh my god yeah, yeah, yeah oh i can't i forget i forget you're on the attendance sheet oh i'm so sorry oh. we usually only have nepotism babies in the class so yeah. <laughs> which is true but is they actually it? would accept jamie lee curtis in this day and age as a student instead of you yeah yeah <laughs> What do you think is the percentage of like nepotism babies who go to Yale? Um, like, well, legacies. I there. I'm sure there are very real numbers on this. Based on my highly anecdotal percentage, I would guess like ten percent. This is all anecdotal, baby. We don't do numbers around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, we make up the numbers made up. Totally. Yeah, yeah. and the points don't matter. It's about hey, like, well, no stats. Is that whose line? Yeah, you got it. All right. Nice. It's been a minute. Nice. That's a great show. Amazing show. Yeah. Totally. You did improv in college, right? Yep. <laughs> I also try to not make that my brand. Oh, oh yeah. I also try and make it. Yeah, yeah you did improv my... out of college, right, Gabby? <sighs> you, like, pursued it very seriously, right? Oh, baby. <laughs> I sure I did. I love the aggression coming out of you. This <laughs> is great. <laughs> Clara just, wow, held up a, a hammer over my head. Roasted. That said, accept your past as an improviser. That was crazy. <laughs> and now I rejected. And then the other side it. said, no but. <laughs> Right. Now I reject all positivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I do think that is one big reason I like stopped doing improv is because I did think people in the community were too positive. Yeah, I, oh. I get that. Oh. So do you feel like you need negativity to push you forward in life? No, of course not. You need negativity to have any fun. It actually pushes you backward, but oh. it is more fun. I do when I say something negative about myself. I don't want the people around me's reaction to be like, no, hey, don't say that about yourself. I want it to be like, "Ah, yeah. And that's comics, That's for sure. Yeah, that's comics. Whereas improv people, it's like, that's not the right attitude to have. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be policing my depression at myself, please. It's it's also, it's it's very different from my family where you could just be self-deprecating. They're like, that's correct. (laughs) <laughs> i'm so sorry no it's cool they're nice <laughs> yeah today i saw my mother and today she um she couldn't figure out if i smelled weird okay so she smelled me like all over to okay. see oh where God. it was coming from and then determined it wasn't coming from anywhere That's and then just the left best possible Wait. ending to that situation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gabby have you ever seen the hit the song and music video can i smell your dick did you make that up I swear. Or did you make that video? I wish I could. Just running around smelling dicks. Ukis Larnold? (laughs) Aukis Larnold. Aukis Arnold A, Pig Latin? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a music video where this woman is like, she has a man who she does not trust, and she's like, can I smell your dick? I just want to sit in the silence of that for a second. Can you sing it again? Can I smell your dick? You know how on Hinge they added like voice prompts? 
they just also add dick smells just to <laughs> want to know what you're getting into. That's such a good idea. <laughs> you know those, you go to a Macy's and they have like those test strips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have it for oh dicks. Oh my God. That's such a funny idea. <laughs> The other day, I was at a show with one audience member. It was the most Blue recent. cheese. Oh, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> nice smell. Why not? The, uh, it's natural. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas has a cheese that we can all smell it. We think he's just growing cheese in the back. <laughs> growing cheese. When really, he's growing cheese in the front. Yay! Uh, there was a, oh. I went to this one audience member show, and... Uh, I like to say my dick does not smell like blue cheese. <laughs> okay. I just want to put that out You're there. Not- I don't want to draw too much attention to my penis, but I am very confident in saying it does not smell like blue cheese. I just want to put that out there. This reminds me of the episode where I couldn't stop saying I love asexuals. <laughs> <laughs> you just could not. <laughs> you just got to say it one more time just to convince everyone. <laughs> and I do love asexuals, by the way. <laughs> I do. I have nothing against them. <laughs> I've got nothing against blue cheese dick Loving smelling Loving and thumbs. having nothing against are two different verbs. <laughs> Not according <laughs> to my mother. <laughs> um, that this oh. show, I was, I was, it was one audience member, so I, uh, I swiped through her hinge live on stage. Whoa. Um, and well, fam- well, famously on Hinge, it's not a swiping; it's it's no, a it's tapping; reading. it's a like. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't figure that part out, and I was kind of drunk, and I was like, "Does anyone know how to do this?" It's an analyze the text <laughs> app. We get it. You haven't had to be on Hinge. Uh, I know, and I'm bragging about it. Yeah. I did. I list. There was a girl who had like a voice memo, and I played it, and it was um her trying a new guitar song. <laughs> Oh no! Oh bless! I swiped. Uh, I, or I I hearted it for the earnesty. That's okay. nice. Yeah, that's good. Do you have a voice note? I do. Ooh, what is what it? Is it? Yeah, um, it's the, uh, the an answer to best dad joke, or like your favorite dad joke, and it's where does the king keep his armies? In his sleeveys. That's Aww. cute. Is that a dad joke or is that a young child's joke or both? Well, wh- who do the young children get their jokes from? True, everything you're uh, we're all product of our environment. Costco. 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 <laughs> yeah, they buy them in bulk. I yeah. can I can tell you what uh, my uh, hinge voice prompt says. It says my dick does not smell like blue <laughs> yeah. cheese. Allegedly, uh no, it's it's uh it's a uh, it's um uh how to pronounce it like it's how do you pronounce my name? Mm-hmm. And I say uh it it looks it looks like it would be pronounced Lucas, but it's actually pronounced the fitness gram pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that gets progressively more difficult as it continues. And it's just and then so I do the So you're just thing. leading with trauma. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Did anyone outside of New York have this though? I don't know. I I, I, I hear a lot about the presidential fitness test, which I think is different than the fitness gram. What is the presidential fitness test? I don't know. There was test. a maintenance phase episode about it. It sounds equally unfun. Oh, I love maintenance, maintenance phase. Maintenance phase is so good. Yeah, shout oh out God. to maintenance phase. Michael Hobbs, if you want to come on the pod. I don't know what that is. You got to listen to podcast. this podcast. Oh, okay, podcast. okay, okay. How did you do on the Pacer test? Oh, horribly. Like, I was <laughs> oh. one of the first three in my class out every time. It was just a reminder of all the things my body can't do. <laughs> I feel like that test is so punitive because, like, as you get older, how fast you run stops mattering. Oh, yeah. But it matters so much when you're a kid, how fast you are. Yeah. That's that's big social currency when you're a kid. Oh, I know. I didn't have it. (laughs) You didn't have the social currency? Yeah, I was familiar with its powers. What if you tried running around with a mic? You were like, I'm so fast. Would anyone care? I feel like that would be counterproductive (laughs) for me. (laughs) I love to see you be like, hey, we're here to work on jokes, but anyone want to fucking race right now? <laughs> people would do it. Yeah, I'd do some it. Would yeah. do it. I know what would also like to race. What? What? What are you setting up? This. <laughs> you know, Luke. I was gonna do like such a stretch, <laughs> dumb introduction of the podcast. <laughs> Lucas is all about that. the setup and the punchline, yeah, just totally. traditional structure. This guy. <laughs> Welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats, guys. Welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats. Today we have an amazing guest. They love to run, and and, and their uh, lack of a uh, place in the pacer test is belying a um, a deep success. Mm. Totally. Uh, give it up for Claire Olshansky. Hell yeah! Very funny comedian, friend of the pod. How are you doing? I'm all right. How about you? We're doing all right. No one ever asks that anymore. It's so nice to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Wait, Claire. What did you do today? 
I worked, I had therapy, I did a mic, I hung at another mic, and then I came here. Damn, all the food groups. Yep. You, yeah, you got everything in. Yeah. You, you had a full day. I, I got a day. question for you about, um, you, you said you went to therapy and you did a mic. Some mm. people say comedy is therapy. Totally. Can you talk about these subtle distinctions between comedy and therapy for a moment? Yeah, my therapist is a way worse audience. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a bitch. Does, does this audience heckle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just chiming in constantly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With, with, with what sort of stuff? How do you feel about it? Ugh, shush. Yeah, sort of like, do you think that might come from your mother? I'm like, can you? I'm trying to get to the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty amazing if at a show, like, somebody started heckling with therapy prompts. <laughs> oh, that would be great. It's your avoided attachment style. <laughs> You oh, your therapist. I don't know. If, I'm just assuming you have a therapist. I do. Uh, we'll just tell you what it is. My therapist always tries to leave me along slowly. I'm like, no, just tell me what's wrong with me. Oh, wait. Is your therapist trying to get you to, to say? To arrive at the. Right. Uh, Guide you to say it yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. To sort of come to my own discovery mm. of this thing. Whereas I just want her to be like, here's what's wrong with you. Right. Interesting. Well, well we had. Um, uh steven rogers on the podcast and he he told us that when he had his uh, first session with this therapist that two minutes in uh his therapist was like oh you're afraid of being a burden that would be lovely i would love if somebody just cut right to it yeah he and i was like oh i kind of want that as well yeah because did you ever have like parents that like you did you ever have parents no. um did wait when you were growing up did you ever have like an you would ask your parent for just a simple thing and they would just end up giving you like a long ass story for no reason. I feel like you're thinking about a specific example. Yeah, you, you know might, I might be. <laughs> you might want to tell us what's going on in that big old brain of yours. It's it's just my skull. It just <laughs> <laughs> no, It's just my skull. massive head. No, I I think there was a time I asked my I think I asked my dad for uh some money to get a ticket to go t see a movie at the UA in Sheepshead Bay with some high school friends and then he one on this long story about how there used to be double features at the movie theater. Because <laughs> that's how old my dad was. He used to go when there was double features. And I was like, so can I? And he was just like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and that was double it. Double features so all was... I heard was... Sorry. Yeah, oh, no, you go first. All I heard was you asked your dad for money and he tried to connect with you. Wow. <laughs> it sounds like your dad had money to give. <laughs> you privileged bitch. <laughs> I have no response. I got no. I got. I got no response. I've been. I've been nailed. I've been hoodwinked. Your parents ever try and connect with you? No. <laughs> no oh, no, must no. be nice. Uh, they, man. they would humor me. They'd humor they, you. Like for, a, I was watching a childhood video where I had constructed all these like Lego spaceships, and my dad Ooh. was like, "Okay, you can tell me about two of them." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how many more did you make than there two? There were probably like five. Okay. And the my explanations were long. Like, okay, as someone fair. who's interacted with young children, I understand why you don't want to, you don't have time for all of that. Mm. For sure. Do you remember those descriptions now? No. You don't remember anything about your Lego spaceships? No. Okay. I remember that the plot structure wasn't great. The, pl <laughs> the plot structure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, watching the those videos, I'm like, okay, Clara, you can, you can get to the point. Behind the construction of the ships or by the but piloting they team? They all had backstories. Oh, yeah. I was... The construction to me was more of a vehicle for storytelling than an exercise in engineering. Whoa, okay. I'm so with you on that. Yeah. I used to play Hot Wheels, and I yeah. would, I would uh, bring make out- Make them kiss? I would make them kiss. <laughs> I would make them fall. No, that was just my stuffed animals. <laughs> they fell in love. And they 69. <laughs> Only a couple of them, not the ones who were related. Only the ones that were in serious relationships. I need to cough. I had a cold. I've been coughing since long before you believe you. this person tested positive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you say tested positive? We were blowing up your spot to the viewers. Yeah. You good? None of our people know her because it was my roommate's friend. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. boo. Then they die. It's okay. Roommate's <laughs> friends are always getting COVID. They're not even real. Yeah. No. No. They don't have birth certificates. NPCs. Yeah, exactly. Roommates, friends, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The only person my roommate used to, my old roommate, not my girlfriend. <laughs> it's so funny if you just <laughs> yeah, called my, your girlfriend uh, my, yeah, my roommate. My yeah, brother like does, closet. calls his fiance his roommate. And Wait, who does? He, my brother calls his fiance his roommate as a bit that he has been doing for a very long time. Does, 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 She's does, fine with it. Okay. 
So is your family about bits? Are you a big bits family? Uh, my dad like did sketch comedy. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I don't know that we're a bits family, but we're a riffing family. At, at what point in life did he do a uh, sketch? After college. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was it ever filmed? Did he ever put it on a website called YouTube? I don't think so. But Aww. he was in a touring group with Jane Lynch and Tim Meadows. Wow. Whoa. Speaking of nepotism babies. I oh just saw God. Jane Lynch in Funny Girl. How was it? You know, everyone is panning this funny girl right now with Beanie Feldstein. And I've, I've said this on my Instagram, but I will say it again. I think that this whole thing against the new funny girl is a psyop by Leah Michelle's people. I don't know what a psyop is. It's like a, it's like an psychological operation. Psychological operation. A psychological mm-hmm. operation to get to sway public opinion or to harm somebody. Or you know, okay. like the CIA does. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The CIA and Leah Michelle. And Leah Michelle. Yeah. Mm. Have you heard anything about this controversy with Beanie Feldstein being bad in Funny Girl? I haven't. So this is like a niche thing. So the thing. CIA <laughs> did a collab with Leah Michelle. Yeah. Basically, Beanie Feldstein, as you know, very charismatic comedic actress, is cast in the lead part of Funny Girl. And mm-hmm. she is a capable singer, not a belter. The part is meant for a belter. And she's also not quite what the role is. Um, would usually commit. It was played by Barbara Streisand at first, mm. so it's kind of okay. tough shoes to fill. Leah Michelle from Glee, it's been her dream for ages to play Fanny Bryce in Funny Girl. And last year, when everything went down with BLM and all of her cast members were like, you are a horrible racist, Leah Michelle, she was not offered the part in the Funny Girl revival Beanie Feldstein was. Oh. But now we're seeing a Leah Sans because the Spring Awakening documentary is out and we're learning all these things about Leah Michelle and the reviews of Funny Girl with Beanie Feldstein are bad. Okay. I've only heard that she showed her vagina to Jonathan Groff. That's the only I news about too. Leah Michelle that I that I'm aware of. Were you there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By heard I mean watched. How was it? Good V. <laughs> they didn't have great chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why that is. <laughs> For a second, I thought you meant nice pH level. <laughs> <laughs> Leah Michelle's vagina uses they them pronouns. <laughs> I can say that I use they them pronouns for those who don't know. Yeah, real recognize real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leah Michelle is a non-binary vagina. <laughs> <laughs> that them ussy. Yeah. <laughs> she introduced herself like Leah Michelle pronouns she her vagina they them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs he him. Mm. Boobs are totally, he- yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about the boobs. I can only imagine they're. There's a lot of masculine yeah, yeah. energy around tits. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Especially around Leah Michelle's tits, mm. specifically. Yeah. Were you a Gleek growing up? I was. I watched for too long. I think I might have even watched a little bit of the fourth season. Wow. Yeah. I've never seen a, a single episode of Glee. That's better. Yeah, okay. No, we got to get you to watch. The pilot's pretty good. The pilot's what pretty if I good. become uh, as obsessed as I am about selling Sunset? Which I have not watched. Oh, it's good. I finished the new season. I gotta finish it. It's so good. So wait, so you you started when it came out, right? Yeah. What did you? I watched on. I watched the pilot on my iPod Nano. Oh my, oh my god. god! Describe the chokehold it had on your life. I was obs- I was so hungry for new episodes. As soon as an episode would end, yeah. I was like, I need more high school drama and singing. That's yeah. so nice, though. I like that you have that relationship to a show. That's no, that's good. That is good. When did you stop, though? When did you break the addiction? So the first half of the first season was fun. Okay. The second half of the first season had fun moments. The second season had maybe a couple fun episodes. And then it was just that thing where you're chasing the the initial high and never Uh, getting back there. That's a shame. A hundred percent. You're right. And then they started doing the very special episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't they have a school shooter episode? Maybe. I didn't stick around (laughs) for all that. I think there was like some sort of attempted suicide plot. And then I think the bully who was absolutely horrible ended up dating a beloved character and in a way that wasn't treated as like, yeah, this is bad. Yeah, for sure. I I remember that because the bully like came out as gay and it was a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I watched, like, I skipped ahead now that it's all on Netflix and watched the gay wedding episode where they just stuck two gay weddings into one wedding. Oh, like, yeah. Like, they just did them together. Um, <laughs> and I was like, this is not well written. You what, like a mass grave? Like, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, like they threw the bodies in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't even name them. Just... <laughs> Yeah, it's weird that the wedding episode was like a cultish uh, mass murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a color guard. There. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. And uh, what's his name? Jim Jones was there. Wait, Tell I don't know who that yeah, is. Yeah, I've guy. got the wrong guy. What's his name? <laughs> I, I, I have nothing. I know who you're talking about, and that sounds right, but you know who I'm talking about. I listened to like the You're Help Wrong About out. episode about it or something. Yes. Oh while we're my talking God. Michael Hobbs reverse. Oh, Michael Hobbs is the best. Michael Hobbs you got to start best. listening to these You got to get into, you got to become a Hobbs head. <sighs> God damn. Wait, how many do I need to catch up on now? So there's maintenance phase? It's just the two. Maintenance phase and you're wrong about. Okay. Yeah, they're the same guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listeners, don't listen to those. Just listen to this podcast that you're <laughs> listening to right now. I have a feeling that like you and I are the only people who converge on those two <laughs> podcasts. Two nosy meerkats and you're wrong about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I have a feeling that those are not. My podcast like lineup is actually pretty uh, diverse. Really? Yeah, I've got some comedy podcasts. I've got some uh, uh, like true crime kind of stuff. Recently, I am I've not listening. diverse at all in my podcast. It's almost completely comedy podcasts. I'm it's- mostly comedy podcasts, and then the Michael Hobbs averse. Yeah, and like a couple other things thrown in there. Mm. I listen to a couple sports podcasts too. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to um, Jake Mintz and Jordan Schusterman from Baseball Barbecue. Great podcast surprisingly funny okay did i just alienate you too i have <laughs> nothing to offer <laughs> <laughs> i'm just sitting here i'm like there's so many references being thrown in front of me i'm like this is a great game to watch <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, instead of counting the sheep you're counting the references yeah to fall asleep yep. exactly <laughs> yeah I, as i'm lying awake i just picture um two guys with a film podcast just naming movies oh. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a, i ended up uh, the third party in a conversation between Michael Aber and Andrew Durso today. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's what God. plays through my head when I'm uh, that's <laughs> love both of those people. That's what uh, oh plays God. through my head when I'm trying to fall asleep. Wow, <laughs> that's such a visual. That's so good. That is some conversation to end up between. <laughs> it is weird the the what the open micers like have niche interests in. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I. Do I have any other niche interests outside of comedy? Maybe like... You do like exotic fruits. I do like exotic fruits. How many conversations is that power? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, how much time you got, dude? <laughs> no, I am um, We like, proceed to do the entire rest of the episode about yeah, exotic yeah. fruits. I do like exotic fruits. Well, we had... Do you know about mangosteen? No. It's a South Asian fruit. It's sort of like a lychee covered in a really thick skin almost like a coconut and it's incredibly sweet and then i also i have baobab powder okay. uh from you, you remember Is that how you pronounce that yeah i only ha- ever read it in the little prince what did you think it was baobab you know, baobab you know like a baobun yeah no that's fair no yeah it, i'm pretty sure it's baobab i believe you yeah yeah that's like in uh harry potter how everyone thought Hermione was Hermione. But it's actually Cho Chang. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. They're yeah. interchangeable. Hermione. Hermione. Cho Chang is, what a choice yeah. of a name. So imaginative. I, I can't um, remember. I feel like I remember reading the book and being like, Cho Chang's kind of cool. Like, she was a good character, I remember. Really? I don't remember I'm her being... I'm not going to participate in any conversation where we're talking up Harry Potter. Okay, oh, we're not, to, oh, we're not talking yeah, yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am I am notoriously anti... That's true. You have jokes. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. And yeah. uh, not to mention, I was uh, I caused a very tense situation in a hot tub Hell tell, yeah. telling someone that Harry Potter houses like weren't... It was it was a conversation where someone said they were like eighty percent Ravenclaw and like twelve percent Slytherin or oh something. My God. And I said, Well, I was trying to humor this person. Mm-hmm. I was like, In the lore of Harry Potter, isn't it true that the sorting hat just puts you in a house? And she was like, Well, that's not very respectful to the quizzes. <laughs> and I said, Bethany, it's all made up. And the hot tub got very quiet. <laughs> oh. The hot tub got very cold. Yeah, very cold tub. <laughs> yeah. And my girlfriend Someone fart to get the conversation leg. going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, then, and then I just farted and the whole thing just... Sh- yeah. Yeah, yeah. And oh. someone was like, oh, I didn't know there were jets. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you'd pass that off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that <was> you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I really like your joke about uh, using the roll on the Metro. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Not to, not to bring that oh, up I in love front that of our listeners, so but it's a phenomenal joke. Thank you. Does that happen to you often? That happened once. Okay. 
using the metro north i'm so sorry yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 how often are you on the metro north well i was a lot in college okay oh yeah that makes yeah. sense oh pff. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And when you were on the Metro North, everyone was like, they didn't go to Yale. It doesn't seem like the type. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone in the train car took a turn coming by my seat <laughs> telling me that. And just were like, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you were a zoo animal on yeah. display. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, can, wait, I want to ask, like, what would, do you remember your experience touring colleges? Yeah. What was, because I remember... I, cause I never went to a single suburb until college, until I visited a friend's home. Oh, come home. on. No, I'm a hundred percent serious. I, I had. I swear to God. I swear to God. I'd never been to a suburb. Wow. Yeah. I had been to suburbs. I had never had like free reign until I, I loved visiting colleges cause my parents would like give me enough for the train ride and enough to get some food and whatever. And then they would be like, like if I had a day off from school and they didn't have a day off from work, like, yeah go to this town you know come back you, you know do your thing come back right and it was like the most freedom that i had felt at that point mm. oh, so independent. if i was like staying with a friend i would like hang out with college kids for the nice. evening what was that like it was great i was i uh yeah cool well yeah well i was wondering well because the reason i was curious is as someone who is also from new york if like the shift to like just a different environment than the city was like a, a a big shift for you if that affected you at all like once i was there and living yeah, there yeah 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 i i mean new haven's still a city yeah um but it's no new york city it's no new york city it's no new york city i feel like i was so, like one my biggest thing being in places that isn't cities is being understimulated and cuz mm. there was so much going on on campus i didn't really have that okay so that particular you're from part Manhattan originally right brooklyn okay we're yeah. in brooklyn yeah. I'm like Borum Hill. The oh. Manhattan of the other boroughs. The Manhattan of the other boroughs. <laughs> what was, uh, is, because Northwestern's not in the city, right? No, it's in like, I mean, Evanston, that's where it is, is technically a city, okay. but it's it's pretty much just a suburb yeah. with like a few shops and stuff. It's, yeah. yeah, it's very residential. And then City University of New York's not in the city, right? Yeah, no. Oh, no, it's it's in every city. It's yeah. actually it's in the universal. clouds above us. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's everywhere and nowhere. And it's in your heart. Yeah. 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 I always appreciated um, having no resources. I think I thought it was great in college. It, we honestly did, like, my friends and I would bond over, like, <laughs> we'd, like, we'll go into our campus and be like, hmm, that's leaking. The city has no funds. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's just one of those things about the public school experience, you know. Isn't it cute how this is crumbling? <laughs> just like- <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the crumbling infrastructure. It yeah. was like somehow Hunter College was like they had like certain parts of the facilities that were like really kind of decked out, but there would just be these kind of like subtle things that were kind of like just off. I don't know, like the they they got a Starbucks in there. But nobody was ever there. <laughs> so it f- effectively... And, and, and the barista's eyes were buttons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was always dark. She kept offering you this like this needle and, and thread. Just like, what do you want me to do with that, dude? Uh... <laughs> I tried drinking it. It didn't work. <laughs> Oh god, no! We had we had a Starbucks in our university center, and we called it Norbucks. Nice, yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that's so cute and quirky. Yeah, I we had an Apple store. We did not call. It, sorry, Clary, show genuine. <laughs> Would say that again. Sorry, I missed that. I said I thought it was pretty cute and quirky. Thank they you. They liked your dumb joke. What an improv person. <laughs> <laughs> so positive and warm and genuine. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, it wasn't my joke. It was someone who uh, I don't know who it was. I do not know who it was. Probably Confucius. Confucius. Indeed. Yeah. Or a plate. Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, she was apparently uh, not straight. Really? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. No. Wait, whoa, whoa. You was, wouldn't believe it. That's a thing people can be not straight? Uh, y- You've got a lot to learn, buddy. I've never heard of such of such uh, whiff-waff talk. Uh, whiff-waff? The, whiff-waff yeah, talk. Yeah, you know those things that men do with ladies? Yeah. Sometimes men do those with men, and ladies do that with ladies. Whoa. And sometimes people do those with see none of the above. <laughs> I need to go. And you know who you know who invented that? The person who first started saying Norbucks. Mm-hmm. Invented wow. being gay. Confucius. I Confucius. Feel so- <laughs> right? Confucius. I feel so old. What if Confucius was like, and you can be gay? And everyone was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what started it all. Yeah. That would have been so sweet. Just like all of these like famous things. And then just like, also, it's totally chill. That's his <laughs> chokehold on yeah. everything. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, how God. recently did you graduate? You. 2018. So a year after me. Yeah. After I graduated Yale. What year were you? Yeah. What, I was uh, 2016. 2016. I graduated college. Yeah. yeah. So you ca- did you come immediately back to the city or did you wander? I spent a year elsewhere that I won't talk about on okay. the air, but I will tell you about it off the air. Okay. okay and okay. then Amazing. I came back after that. Okay. And what was it like readjusting? Oh, so good. I had missed the city so much. Yeah. It was, I was best. living with my parents, which, you know, not always like the most ideal situation. But I see. outside of that uh just so happy to be back in a place that like the rhythm of it was in my blood nice. oh my god yeah it's like when you're a native new yorker i feel like it's totally just in your comfort zone at oh this yeah point. it's like well i well how often do you get asked like what was it like growing up in the city all the time and yeah. i was like a lonely kid so i didn't do stuff which is the same anywhere yeah it was i mean i i didn't go in the city that much i was pretty much just here yeah and like it's a very on this like, podcast. On this podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been just recording since the day I was born. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why you're so neurotic. Everything exactly. goes on air with yeah. our mutual friend Charlotte. She, the, we, we grew up on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you guys have a mutual friend. We do. We do. What? Charlotte Jurgens, yeah. very talented what? filmmaker. Clara, you and I have a mutual friend. Leo. We do. Leo. Yeah, that's how I met you. Oh my god. Leo, wait, who's Leo? Leo Frampton. Leo Frampton. He used to do stand up, but he, I think, is more doing like he's an environmentalist now. Oh, okay. I think he's still doing the music thing. He, and Check out his music. He's a music. Yeah, shout out yeah. Salamander Band. Very good band. Oh. But yeah, no, our friend is a lovely person called Charlotte Jurgens. Who Charlotte and mine, our moms met in like a mommy and me class, and then they became friends. And so we're both only children, but we were like grew up as like very very close and like the closest thing to like siblings that we had. And you Charlotte played my mom in a play. What? What was the play? Curse of the Starving Class. W- was Sam your mom the, the the? She was the starving, starving class. class. <laughs> I was the <laughs> When you say played your mom. Are you familiar with theater? <laughs> yeah, you know. Are you familiar with the conceit of. Well, is it a dramatized version of your mom? No, it not. Mu- she didn't play my real mom. Okay. I played a character. <laughs> she played a character. I can't what? tell if you're doing a bit right now. I'm not. My brain is just her <laughs> mom. <laughs> it's like 10 p.m. <laughs> she did. Charlotte did not play Clara Olshansky's mom. Okay. You Charlotte get that Clara was playing a role the in this character play, right? that I was playing. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I cannot believe what I just witnessed, you guys. I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. What can I say? I didn't go to Yale. <laughs> I don't know a lot. They don't teach you what plays are at they other don't schools. Teach you, uh, yeah. So what you're saying is, when you played a cow, you you were confused. You were like, whoa, whoa. whoa. Gabby is a cow in real life. I'm playing a version of me, right? Like, uh, in a way, acting is the most truthful version of you you can do. When did you play a cow? <laughs> <laughs> I played a cow in Into the Woods in seventh grade. Nice. There we go. And I have to say, it was a really good cow. The summer I was at Bucks Rock, the kids did Animal Farm. I'm like, this is a dark play for kids. <laughs> oh my I god! I remember that. What w- I didn't see it. What was it like? Um, dark. Yeah, the I'm kids sure. were great. They were very committed. It's an excellent camp for yeah. act for kids who who act. But mm. it's a uh, that's that's nuts. I remember when I was at camp, uh, when I was a, I think I was fifteen. We did Equus. Shit. Whoa. Hey, 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 damn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it did, was. Did someone get naked for the show? A boy got into his underwear, and um, did the scene. Okay. Um, he was really good. Yeah, no one got naked. Though. Okay, uh, in case you were ex- that's probably good. In case you were excited, I'm disappointed. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is so gross. <laughs> this, is this is disgusting. No, but I'm. But that is an uh, that is an odd play to do at a summer camp. That is very odd. Yeah, one year they did Rent. The one my wow. first year did they did Rocky Horror. I was exposed to Rocky Horror way too young. Do you remember when you were first exposed to Rocky Horror Picture Show? I never saw it until like junior year of college. What'd you think? I, it was exactly what I had expected and I had a great time. <laughs> it's like the, ex- yeah, it's one of those things you like have a picture in your mind and it's that exact mm. picture. Yeah, yeah. Great time. Yeah. You're just like, I knew that Tim Curry was going to wear lingerie all this time. Yeah, I yeah. knew. Yeah. I- I looked at him, I was like, this guy this wears guy. lingerie. Yeah, this guy's not in lingerie by the end of this movie. Yeah. It does feel like you kind of had to be there for it. You know, I feel like mm. I missed the boat. Yeah, it didn't come to me at the right moment in my life. 
a hundred percent. I was shown it by my high school girlfriend when I was sixteen. And what'd you think? Was she queer? Uh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Did you uh was, was Did that, I know? Yes, I knew. Was yeah. that okay with you? I, I was very accepting. I don't know about you, but I'm a very accepting person. That's you, wild. Look it up. That you were able to accept her without ever having even heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. Thank you for her correcting me on my own. Yes, and. <laughs> this thing that I made up. Yeah. I accept it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> another, another thing like that I think is rent. Rent came mm. to me at the right moment in my life. How old were you? I was 13. Yeah. But mm. I think if it didn't, you're fucked on understanding rent. Mm. I've never seen it. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. I was 10 and I was just like, I was, I was blown away by it. I thought that it was the best thing in the world. I rewatched it so many times. That's amazing. I think it's you one of those things that's like Glee in that like mm. there were just like queer characters. And if you were queer and you saw Rent, it was like the first sign of that. And it also seemed very edgy and cool. Like it was one of those pieces of art where the whole appeal is like we're all fucked up. And when you're 15 and feeling fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. We're fucked up in the head. Oh, that's man. the yeah. connection. We all felt fucked up at that time. You're connecting the dots, man. Claire's really breaking down these patterns. What a what an academic. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Did you have a thesis project? I did. What, what did was you, it? Yeah. I wrote a novella about an astrophysicist who had tried too hard like fighting to keep Pluto a planet and then sort of had to live in the fallout of that. That's so Whoa. freaking cool. Thanks. That actually sounds like a good story. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, I might actually pick your brain on something I'm writing, like right. because that it sounds pretty. Is it Pluto based? Uh, everything to me is Pluto based. I think Pluto was robbed. Much like your victory on our roast battle. Ay. Oh shit! Yeah, that was it. Was your rebuttal? I think that uh, that won you that battle. That was uh, I was proud of that rebuttal. Yeah, I was proud what of was it. The, what was the rebuttal? The rebuttal. <laughs> Lucas knew I was going to make a joke about him being part black. I didn't know until, well, I didn't know, but I thought of it a minute before going on stage. Oh, really? I really, I thought of it. The, I was like, oh, if she makes a joke about that, I've got to say it. It was, um, uh, I think the joke I said was, um, Lucas is part black, which is crazy for someone who looks like he's waited all his life just to say the N word. Yeah. And I said, uh, it is true, Gabby. I am a quarter black and you're Jewish, which means I'm the one quarter you can't pick up off the street. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It won a, he got like a really long applause for that. I was very proud of that. And one. that was oh, the yeah. moment I was like, fuck, I lost. <laughs> but it's funny. You, you look back on the video and like all the other jokes are pretty solid. No, yeah, they're incredibly solid. Yeah. And when you said like my uh, my dad loved me enough to live, I was like, oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah. was like, Do you oh. remember your process of writing r roast jokes mm. for your for your battle? Like, uh, that's a good question. I wrote 15 and chose five. Yeah. But what is the, what is the, like, did you enjoy writing a bunch of jokes and then throwing them away? Or I what? did. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good time. Cause it was against a very good friend of yours. Correct. Yes. So had you been thinking about subjects that you could roast him on for a while? We knew the roast was coming for like three weeks. Th okay. Okay. That's not, that's not bad. Yeah. 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 Do you, what's your process of joke writing in general? Because I really like the way you write jokes. Thank you. Um, it depends. Often uh, can't fall asleep at 3 a.m. And then I have an idea and then I voice memo it. Mm. Nice. Um, so you're just naturally good at set up punchline. Like yeah. a stupid bitch. You just think in perfect joke form. Totally, yeah. All my thoughts are, it's just sort of a matter, you know, there are just so many perfect jokes swimming around here. It's just a matter of reaching in and pulling one up. Don't you hate it when the guest is so much more talented than us? I yeah. hate it so much. We, we like, w when this episode Don't you hate out. it when the hosts lie to you? Don't you hate it when the hosts just deceive you? Don't you hate it when your guest does a better bit than what the hosts are doing right now? <laughs> they do it better than... <laughs> Than the hosts. Do. The last forty five minutes of this episode will cut Clara out. <laughs> <laughs> like Sherry Pie in Drag Race season twelve. <laughs> I just watched that season of Drag Are you a Drag Race fan? No. But do you know about the Sherry Pie thing? No. Are you aware of Drag Race? Yes. You're aware of the Drag Race. I think you'd like it. I think it's I think I'd like it too. I don't watch stuff anymore. Do you know what do you not, not watch any kind of show? Like, well, I mean, occasionally I will, but like between working mics, trying to maintain some sort of relationship with my non-comedy friends and mm. like having family in the city, 
I just kind of don't watch stuff. That is a lot, actually. That does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I I've been trying to find time to start Succession and I can't do it. Lucas, you're blowing it. You got to watch Succession. (sighs) I know. I feel like the the more pressure I'm putting on you, the more you're not going to do it. But I, think, I, I don't know. I don't it know. is worth it. I know it I've is. I know first, it will like, be. Six episodes and I enjoyed them. Oh, so good. Chivroy. Mm. Not Tell, for you. Wait, what, what, what's Chivroy? Is that a character? It, what if I just made up a word? <laughs> yeah, I, a I would believe it. It's a it's a character. It's you're a very sneaky character yourself. I'm a sneaky character. You're a very Do you think sneaky, I'm a sneaky character? character? You've never been sneaky to me personally. I don't think I'm capable. Do you believe of being in Gabby's sneaky. potential for sneakiness? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't doubt her. Yes. I thought I was thinking about this the other day, like being a spy. Because, mm-hmm. like, okay, everyone, when you're a kid, you think being a spy is such like a crazy thing. Like, oh, we're gonna have gadgets and gizmos. Mm-hmm. You grow up, you realize being a spy is just being like the CIA goes, okay, go to a foreign country and don't be conspicuous and just listen in on their conversations. That's basically like a paid gossip. <laughs> like that's ba- I'm like yeah. basically a spy for my best friend. I like get everyone else's information and then just tell her. Can I tell you that my dad was a legit spy in the 70s? Can you tell us that? No, I actually can't. I can. don't think okay, it's cool. allowed. <laughs> I, mean, I guess he is dead. Yeah, he is dead. So right. it's yeah, like. Yeah, or on. is he? Yeah. And it, it was. Well, it's. <laughs> the most undercover he's <laughs> been yet. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, I gotta say, your dad is doing a really good job being a spy right now. He's really, good. really low profile. <laughs> that, Hasn't said a word to me. That ashes maneuver. <laughs> yeah. Off, man. <laughs> that was just cake mix. That was just. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they tasted so sweet. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh my lord. You saw the My Strange Addictions where they, they eat Oh the my ashes, god, that right? woman eats ashes and she's like crying. She's like, I'm almost out. It's so funny. I gotta get another one. <laughs> oh. I guess if you don't watch stuff, you probably haven't seen My Strange Addictions, but there is an incredible no. My Strange Addiction. It is an incredible right. episode. Oh uh, no, we- but I'm sorry, no. No, you go. No, I was gonna Lucas. say my dad was a spy yeah. for a Czechoslovakian people's resistance in the 70s. So it's now not even a country that exists anymore and a dad that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, he went out with the country. Yeah. No, what what he told me, I'll make it quick. It's like it's very simple. He was like he was transporting documents from one group of people to another who were involved in this coup that was attempting to happen and he was walking along the street and he noticed that there was, someone was following him. And he kept making turns and th- this dude was following him. So he ducked into a cafe and he flushed the documents down the toilet to protect the information and the people involved. Damn. That cool. Was, that's and the, then uh, the fish found them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the fish became radicalized. Yeah, and the fish began. <laughs> the fish were like, what? Classified? <laughs> <laughs> this is what goes on up there. Do you know any spies? Um, If I do, they're keeping it on lock. They're keeping it on mm. lock. Yeah, yeah, they're very good at their jobs. Yeah. And you're keeping it on lock very well as well, if I may say. Yeah, what's that about? That's the perfect Lucas, answer. we're recording. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just saying, that is the response a spy would have. Hiding in plain sight. Mm. <laughs> a spy who goes on podcasts. <laughs> 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 they just talk about their spy experience, but yeah. everyone thinks they're joking because they're on like a stupid comedy yeah. podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. I had a neighbor who I was pr- like growing up who um, I was pretty sure he was in the CIA. He like had this job where he worked at a toy shop, like a toy factory. So he would. You're like, putting very normal words in air quotes right now. Well, toy shop. You heard of one of these things? I you heard of the freaking toy shop. Well, as if to say. It sounds like a euphemism. You heard of the toy shop? Well, just who's making brick and mortar toys anymore? It's all digital now. (laughs) All the toys are digital now? (laughs) Yeah, you know how the kids are. Can I toss you my (laughs) (laughs) e-frisbee? Anyway, so he worked for this toy shop or toy factory. Get your story straight. Go on. uh, Factory, shop, toy. (laughs) A shop for factories? (laughs) He worked at this factory toy. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm just not going to finish the story because it's not very interesting. Okay, I'm just going to keep doing variations on what he did. He worked at this. Um, 
He worked in my toy. <laughs> <laughs> he worked in your t- Yeah, it was great. Why are you laughing, Lucas? <sighs> it was actually a really beautiful experience for me. It's a beautiful experience for me, too. He moved away and we never heard about him again. That's oh, a big reason I think. Oh, he's the spy. He was a right? spy because yes, he okay. abandoned. He, uh, you ever get a, you ever get abandoned? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> you said that so seriously. I was like, oh, there's a story here. Oh. Yeah, when's it? When's your last abandonment? You got secrets? I just interpret a lot as abandonment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you okay. on that. So are you more of like an anxious attachment person? Anxious avoidant, baby. The two worst ones all at once. <laughs> mm. I don't understand how those work still. Anxious avoidant? Oh, they don't work. It doesn't like yeah, work. No. <laughs> it's like if you're holding the wrong... It's like if you've got a north magnet, you hold up a north magnet. If you've got a south magnet, you hold up a south magnet. Yeah. So you're trying to connect, but it's all wrong? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Basically, uh, we got a lot of magnets and not a lot of fridges. Exactly. Yeah, that's so that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, if someone shows it's like when someone shows interest, you're like, Ugh. and then if somebody's not showing interest, it's like I need you to be mine right now. Mm. Oh, interesting. How do you feel about that? Have you encountered people like that in your in your past? <laughs> Sorry, I know that was a really rumbly burp. I I could like I didn't just hear it. I felt it like come up your <laughs> sternum. There was there was bass to it. Yeah. I some of the stuff doesn't resonate with me. You know. You don't think that attachment style? Sorry, is Sorry, you're securely attached <laughs> in a happy relationship. Oh, oh, oh I'm not secure. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying the relationship is happy, but I am not secure ever. Great. But I don't. But I don't know what but you are attached. I just know I'm all fucked up inside. I don't know how or why or what it's called. Mm. Can I ask? Was there was there ever a time where you were a different kind of attachment style, or is this something you grew into, or is this something you always? This were? is not like a real diagnosis, by the way. This is like me looking at quizzes. Oh yeah, on no, the no, no, I know. And oh, being no. like, um, and if anything, I think I've gotten more securely attached over time well that's good just as i've gotten uh, granted i haven't like been in a relationship in a while so Mm. it's hard to say yes but i definitely started hard at anxious avoidant Mm. like that was point a you also said it like clara was working towards an attachment style like or have you been grinding at the mics to get a new attachment style (laughs) have you been working at that grind set uh yeah. no i i asked because like i remember i took that quiz and they said they said uh attachment styles if you have like a- anxious avoidant it doesn't mean that's who you are that's who you've like become over time that's what you've adapted to be because so of bad experiences what? but but those bad experiences are like in your infancy and early childhood i thought that the the dude meant oh like in like I, I early guess may- dating oh, maybe it can happen in early dating experiences that's too. what i thought it i was, think for yeah. me it's like uh childhood stuff ah i see okay so like yeah. what <laughs> should we go there <laughs> yeah roast your parents <laughs> no should i take the quiz oh by yeah. all means do it um do you know your myers-briggs type while yeah. i take this quiz, INFP. you should talk about it infp you said yeah. i don't know the letters but i think i'm the console okay i'm the mediator i have a joke about like I'm not a mediator. Oh yeah, that's what not are the you? joke. The joke is better. <laughs> than that, but. The joke is just listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not a, mediator. a mediator. You get like clapter on it. Yeah, <laughs> Everyone's yeah. like, not a mediator. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, I was I was curious because <laughs> wait, I'm sorry. wait, are you look at the photo for the attachment style? Oh my god. <laughs> oh god, that's that is. I'm going to describe this Wait, for viewers. Wait, can I say? I was yep. going to say that kind of look. It looks like a really bad drawing of Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a really bad drawing. It also it. looks like a black guy in white face. A little bit. Like his face is like... It looks like unblended contour. That's what it looks like on his face. I find it relatively easy to get close to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will say that, yeah. I find it difficult to allow myself to depend on others. Yeah. yeah. By the way, so for anyone listening and anyone watching, uh, take this quiz purely as a matter of fun, and please do not agonize over it. This is nothing to like diagnose or take too seriously. Yeah, this is not professional medical help. It is not. Unlike our... No, 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 yeah. no. We are not medical professionals of any kind <laughs> or mental health or anything. But I will say that um, 
I think I, for a while, leaned more anxious avoidant, and I think I'm coming out of that. Nice. Um, with some help from my therapist and learning how to like set better boundaries and understand myself better. Yeah. So that was that was why I was a little bit curious if like experiences in dating pushed you one way or another. Well, that's why I'd like to think that I like again yeah. haven't been in a serious relationship in a while, but mm. I I have to imagine with like how much how I view myself has changed, hmm. how I would relate to someone else would also change. How would you say your uh, relationship to yourself has changed in recent months? Um, in recent years, yes. I was trying real hard to be a woman, knew mm. I was queer, but didn't really know how I was queer, or what to do with that, because relating to women as a woman didn't feel great. Mm. Um, and I think um, like the sort of confronting that stuff unlocked a lot of other stuff where just sort of like, making one big move to say who I am and what I need, I would like to hope had ramifications for how I approached other parts of my life too. That's so wonderful mm. that you've been able to do that. What do you think led to your, I mean, if we're going to go into this, like what do you think led to your discovery that you were non-binary? It was slow. Um, there were a lot of like little moments. Mm. Um, at one point I wrote a play with a non-binary main character, basically arguing with my parents about being non-binary. I that, love that. Where Charlotte played my mom. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So wait, you were right. It yeah, was yeah. actually. I fucking told you everyone <laughs> gaslit me for so long. I, oh my god, gatekeep girl boss gaslight Lucas. Gatekeep. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't Clara. Them. I wasn't calling Clara a girl boss. Lucas. I know. I, I was know, calling I know, I know. you a fucking girl boss. Oh, thank you so Clara much. Clara is great, and not a them boss, but a them Lena. Okay, have you heard about this? Them no. Lena? the girl boss girl Lena dichotomy. What? No. Okay, this is something my grad school classmates and I have come up with. Shout out to them. Uh, Anna oh, and Molly. So when you said, have you heard about this? This was not like something that I could have heard about. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> something you're going to hear about oh, right no, now. Oh, no, please. We're just gaslighting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, uh, it would be funny if Sunday. you were like, oh, yes. Like, this is a common theory. Everybody has spoken about this. <laughs> oh, we're not here to help your mental health right now. Yeah, we're no, not. No. Uh, no, we're not. But Absolutely go on, go not. on, please. So a girl boss is, you know what a girl boss is. Mm -hmm. A girlina is the opposite of a girl boss. A girlina is kind of like a cross between a girl criminal and a girl like a girl's girl okay so like thelma and louise okay. classic girlina behavior okay another thing i haven't seen oh you I gotta also get on it i haven't seen thelma and louise uh, we should do a screening of thelma and <clears throat> louise i am not always sure that i can depend on people to be there when i need them not true i'm very popular <laughs> <laughs> gender female relationship status well it gives you between single married widowed and divorced so i yes. guess single for for the purposes of this i'm 28 years old it's it's weird they don't only just have in a relationship yeah or like that's such a what the fuck what you get they don't give you your results unless you sign up for their fucking newsletter oh just... you have to take another test where that's not true there are so many of them <laughs> i love how much time you just waste anxious <laughs> preoccupied what those <laughs> you read it read what i am anxious preoccupied attachment style may be viewed as needy or clingy oh <laughs> they tend to be highly sensitive to subtle changes in behavior and patterns within a relationship and need constant reassurance that they won't be abandoned oh no 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 oh no 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 i don't know who that's about hey gabby i'm not going anywhere thank you <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas gets up and leaves. Yeah. You, you guys do kind of match. So like, we are a little bit. just take over as Lucas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no one would. Do you want to get in on this mic actually for a minute? Yeah, we could, we could do it. We could, we could change it up. Just swap places. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. For a moment. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't know why this feels so radical to me. This has never happened before. Are we going to do a deep dive into yeah, Lucas right now? Lucas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask Lucas the most invasive questions you yeah, can yeah, think. Yeah. Okay. How big is your wiener? <laughs> <laughs> what does it smell like? <laughs> <laughs> What's the stench? <laughs> <laughs> enough and uh, blue cheese. I lied. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Now that you're in that sea, you can't. Yeah. You can't. What do you What do you want to ask Lucas right now? Um, that? what was the first time you felt excluded from a group? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i actually have an answer for that i okay. do have an answer for that uh when i was in high school like the first couple days of my high school experience i went to sit with like kids that were in my theater group and 20 minutes into the conversation they actually all just turned to me and just said leave because they had 
formed their clique already and they did not want me oh that's a part of that. devastating and i literally walked away with my body like vibrating in terror thinking that i had done something awful oh. and then and uh to the and genuinely genuinely uh early on in comedy uh i was so petrified of just going up to people just to talk with them unless i was ex expressively um invited because i was so afraid i had that for forever yeah really yeah how did you i get was over so it? yeah or have you i um part of it like the vibe coming back from the pandemic everyone was just a little bit more like excited to be chatting with people mm. and then i feel like there were like uh if you for one thing i was like better at comedy than i was before the pandemic and so people were more open to talking to me mm. um and then i think there were a few people who sort of like helped to be those inroads for me mm. Mm. yeah i feel like that's what i always tell people who are new to comedy you get a couple good friends yeah 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 a couple you know aaron abelot clemens's yeah nick cohen's adam matrani's yeah yeah I say everyone Chris but Schurz. Lucas. Chris. <laughs> I say everyone but Lucas's name. <laughs> I name everyone. I'm like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I was pre-pandemic, you know, it had only been a few months for me, but a couple times I was like at the same mic as you or something, and I was like, oh, thank God, I know somebody. Oh, that's very Aww. sweet. Yeah. yeah. I, I loved, I, I liked coming back from uh, the pandemic to do comedy, but I was also very intimidated because it had been like a year and a half since I'd like physically gone on stage, so I felt so like... Like I was new to it again, mm. which is ironic because you probably were keeping more in practice than most people because you had a Zoom mic. That was, yeah. a, that was a lot of fun, actually. It was like, you know, people kind of shit on Zoom mics and they are right. But it did keep me like writing. And there's still yeah. bits I use like from mm. stuff that I wrote on Zoom. Wait, Claire, uh, where, what was your first mic back after the pandemic began uh, it was an eastville one that's oh. usually hosted by two women i don't know who i'm not naming names because i don't know names okay um but and this was by the way this was like whatever it was two weeks out from my second dose i set my calendar i was like as soon as i can that's what i'm doing yeah um i go to this mic it's i want to say like 25 dudes and me mm -hmm. um and it's they're not all white but they are all straight um i'm pretty sure they're all cis uh and they all do not share my sensibility <laughs> it's a lot of jokes about their own and other people's ethnicities some Aye. transphobic jokes some sexist jokes and of let's say let's say there were 26 people there i was 26th and wow. everyone was gone it yeah. was me the host and the comic who went before me in a way, wait, can I ask, in a way, is that better than if everyone stayed? I have actually done okay in those shitty rooms. Okay. And when that Me happens, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you can not make those kinds of, like, I can not make those kinds of jokes and do better than y'all have been doing. Mm. And that's a good feeling. I do that tell people good. that pretty often. Like, I think that there's a certain kind of joke when it's told over and over again that is, not necessarily like bad or offensive, but just kind of an assault on the senses because it uh, requires a certain amount of like anger and vitriol. And when you come in with silly humor, people do like it because it's just lighter. Yeah. 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 It's a break. Yeah. I mean, look, I feel like even when like you go on, so you're you being a straight cis male, I'm still like, you know, oh, I fit in transphobia. I gotta please the people. You yeah. fit in lot. Uh, yeah, I'm always like, thank God I care. he's doing transphobia it's right now. Thank you. I feel thank like you. your material is just so much like lighter and easier to deal with than thank some you. of the like. I do think when there's unformed opinions about the news, mm. no matter who is doing those opinions, they are unformed, so they don't help. I love the like. I gotta have my take comedy because it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, and it's better that you don't. Yeah, actually. yeah. Really, nobody was asking you. Nobody wanted this. Yeah, no, no. I, I, but I will say, like, in general, I think like what constitutes a, sort of like comedians that are people I think a lot of us would want to spend time with is that they tend to have a lot more cheerful looks on the world. And much more yeah. like silly views rather than like very like. Maybe we've been improv people all along. 
Sorry, say that again. I didn't hear. We that. are the improv people. Yeah, Clara was saying the improv people are the us. We met along the way. I I, I messed that one up mm. so bad. You fuck. Yeah, no but. Yeah, no but. <laughs> you're doing you're doing anti improv to yourself. You're like yeah. fuck my first instinct. I hate my first. I was very afraid of trying improv for a long time because I was so afraid of my. Did instincts. you do it? I did. Um, in 2019, I did start taking improv classes. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Which it was uh, great. which theater? A magnet theater. Nice. Yeah, I had a great Who'd time. Who'd you have? Uh, first year, I had Ellen Matthews. Okay, I don't know. And then I had Lewis Kornfeld. Okay. I had Rick Andrews, Lewis Kornfeld's partner. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lewis is amazing. He's so So you good. did the magnet, but were you the North magnet that you were pushing together? or? I was I was the quiz. Tag yourself. Oh, you the <laughs> quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Anxious, preoccupied. That's so sad. Also, I, didn't I even... like the vibe so much better now that you're the Lucas master. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, I like this better, Lucas. Thank you. Wait, can you do an impression of me? I sure can't. Wait. <laughs> try anyway. No judgment. I won't push you. But I, I've never been able to do impressions of anyone except my grandma. But uh, wait, do your grandma? Do your hear... grandma? Yeah. Uh, see, I said that, and I'm immediately regretting it. The, she would just make dirty jokes and then go. <laughs> and you have to believe me that that was spot on. <laughs> no, I do believe you. <laughs> I know, That's I really good. I believe you. Oh, I so love sweet. that. So your grandma was a dirty woman. She was so sophisticated and so filthy. Oh, mm-hmm. that's awesome. She was a sex therapist. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I was watching the movie version of the novel Norwegian Wood with her. Um, and we were in sort of the common area and the family was just filtering in and at one of the characters is talking about her issues in the bedroom and my mm. grandma goes oh vaginismus <laughs> holy shit yeah wow my mom is a sex, a sex therapist as well oh nice uh, yeah, i've been trying to come up with bits about it but it's really it's really quite difficult because i have not come to understand it myself <laughs> well that's good that you weren't like exposed to that and that wasn't like part of your psyche that oh, you yeah. had to deal with yeah. as a kid yeah was yeah. my mom also your sex therapist or was it Clara's grandma? I've never had sex. I wouldn't know. I've, Thank God. Yeah. This Oof. is a virginal podcast. It's, it's it's about time we've had one. Yeah. <laughs> nice virginal podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many no. of these podcasts are having too much sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say about podcasters? <laughs> so sexual. So yeah. sexual. Yeah. Always oh, yeah. charming everyone up and down. My mom yeah. is not a sex there, but she is a clinical psychologist. Oh, nice. And you so. Lucas said she's the real deal. Yeah. She's not one of these little therapists. Um, How? Yeah. That was a perfect therapist impression. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your therapist does. Too, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> she goes. Ew. But she likes to throw in a like. Uh, t- I'm doing the jacking off hand motion. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> your therapist does that? Y- yeah, you know she'll be like. <laughs> with the. How do you motion. know it's a motion? How do you know she's not actually jacking off? How well, do you I know? How do you not know? In it. <laughs> Wait, Claire, Claire. <laughs> How do you not know it's an invisible penis? Invisible penis. <laughs> yeah. A Jeffrey Tube in that situation. smells like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> invisible penises don't have a scent. That's no. beautiful. Oh my. <laughs> beautiful little Jeffrey Tube in that. Oh my Remember God. that? That feels like so long ago. That was so long yeah. ago. I miss him every day. I couldn't I couldn't pick him out of a lineup if you paid me to. I have no idea what he looks like. Yeah, I don't think I could either. Yeah. Yeah. But the I think dick. probably for the week that happened, I knew what his face looked like. Mm. I don't know if even I did at that yeah. time. I feel like I like probably saw some article thumbnails. Yeah. Were there any other like big twi- what's the like Twitter thing, like main character weird thing in the past two years that like you remember the most vividly? Cake. That like is it cake? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. T- talk about that for a second. Like how does it disturb you? <laughs> how often are you able to discern the cake from the non cake? Never. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Do you does it like make you lose object permanence? Um, for sure, but also like, um, like I like cake better than I like most things. So mm. in a way, it's kind of a fantasy that I can escape to. <laughs> so like you're like going through, you're talking to your therapist, uh-huh. and then your trauma from childhood becomes cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, this is way better. Yeah, I see what I you're like saying. this a lot. Yeah, is it? Cake? Oh my god, I don't it's know. F- yeah, the cake thing was a, was a big deal. Is my, it depression or is it cake? My <laughs> personal favorite was anytime something came out about Barry Weiss. I'm obsessed with Barry Weiss. Baritone. I, I remember the letter. The letter? Oh, oh, my God. Like the letter sort of railing against cancel culture. 
Oh, yeah, okay. That's not the one where she resigned from the New York Times. That's the one that I'm thinking of. Oh, my oh. God. Oh. Yes. I don't think I read that all the way through. There's no reason to. Oh, okay. There's no reason to. Do a spark note summary. Um, these youths are so sensitive. Okay. That's a good impression of Barry Weiss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. don't like my Zionism. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like it hurts people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the views I perpetuate. Kate McKinnon's like, that's my ex. <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know that. That's incredible. It's yeah. my 9-11. Barry Weiss dating Kate McKinnon. And I who was here on 9-11. <laughs> who do you think broke up with who? There's just a sad <laughs> lull <laughs> that we all <laughs> figured <laughs> out. Kate <laughs> broke up with Barry Weiss and Barry Weiss released a letter. An open letter. Mm. <laughs> Why breakup culture needs to end. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> breakup culture. <laughs> you get broken up with you just blame society <laughs> <laughs> this is what the liberals are doing to us they're just making us all break up yeah <laughs> liberals are always moving their stuff out of my house <laughs> why uh, liberals are always taking my cat <laughs> what liberals want is always changing <laughs> <laughs> and they don't communicate it well i'll tell you that much <gasps> oh. Reminds me of uh, this this thing that happened with Olivia Wilde uh, yesterday. <gasps> what happened with Olivia Wilde yesterday? She got served um, uh, court hearing papers about custody for her kids while she was on stage presenting an award. But not just any award. An award for the movie that she directed, that Harry Styles acted in, and that most likely she cheated on Jason Sudeikis with Harry Styles during. Oh, wow. That's such a more um, litigious slap. I, I will. I did not know that she was uh, that she maybe cheated. I did not know about that. I just thought this is what I thought happened. I thought that they split up and then she started dating Harry Styles. Uh, that is the official story, but the timeline doesn't match. I don't want to be an Olivia Wilde conspiracy theorist, but it doesn't. I just, I just hope no one cheats on each other. That's just what I hope. But if they did. I mean, being served divorce papers in the middle of your... It wasn't divorce. I it thought was it was custody, it was custody yeah. papers, yeah. And apparently Jason Sudeikis said, I, I did not mean for this to happen while she was doing that award. But I then immediately that was... went and uh, recorded a cover of Before He Cheats called Before She Cheats. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was thinking about that song the other day, and I was like, it's man. Good song. I don't know that song. Lucas. I dug my key into the side of his pretty little souped-up four-wheel drive, carved my name into his leather seats, took a Louisville slugger to both headlights, slashed a hole in all four tires. Maybe next time he'll think before he cheats. Wow. Yeah. Who? I, I, I always sing uh, into his legacy. Am I the only one? I don't know that one. Uh, no, uh, you know, it's, took something into his leather seats. Oh, you I always say, say legacy. legacy. Um. I, that's, you know what? More impactful. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Carrie Underwood's a poet. Yeah. <laughs> that way. Oh, it's a Carrie Underwood song? Yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, I've never listened to a single song she's done. That's you fine. weren't an American Idol head growing up? No. I was. I was a huge American I think I only I saw knew that some... song from anime music videos. Oh, oh. Yes. Okay. I do actually have a friend who auditioned recently on American Idol. How'd they do? He did okay. I think he got passed to the second round, but they were like... Yeah, you're just a bass singer. We don't feel like you have that much range. And I was like, no, he's so good. You be nice to him. <laughs> but did he have the backstory? He didn't. I don't know if he like laid into like the backstory that much. He's like a 20 year old. His name is Luke Taylor. Shout out to Luke Taylor, Luke the voice. Um, but he um, he is he's like a basso profundo. He's like the deepest vocal range you can possibly have. And he has like a baby face. He's very sweet disposition and so like it was a big thing of like how young he looks versus how like deep his voice is and they just kept talking about it so it's were, a gimmick yeah that that's what they said they were like uh we feel like this is just like a little bit of a gimmick we don't feel like you have that much range as a singer and i was like he's so good though i was like be nice to him be nice be nice to my friend luke your talent is a gimmick your whole thing is a gimmick yeah yeah so Every rude everything claire all those jokes you write mm-hmm it's a gimmick. Yeah. Wow. I've never felt so seen. <laughs> <laughs> this whole get up in the seat you're sitting in, it's 
kind of a gimmick. <laughs> well, this you is kind, kind of a gimmick, gimmick and yeah. it's a gimmick. This is a gimmick, actually. I feel so comfortable around you right now. <laughs> I feel like we should always be sitting next to each other. I feel great yeah. right here. This is this is a good way. This is a good place. Well, to men be. always take up space. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. You need your own couch. <laughs> yeah, big big growing boy. We them boys. We them boys. <laughs> yeah. We make a no. Is that how it goes? I don't know the rest of the song. I just know before the- he cheats. <laughs> that's how it goes. Stay and then the, the second verse is the uh, internalized misogyny verse where she gets mean to the other woman. I'm like, she's not the one who yeah, hurt you. Yeah, who can't shoot whiskey. And yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I can't shoot whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with what? A rifle? <laughs> oh, I can shoot <laughs> yeah, whiskey yeah. with a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can shoot tequila, but not no whiskey. I can shoot whiskey. You can? Yeah. Well, then. I can shoot whiskey. You're just like Carrie Underwood, both of you. Yeah, yeah. 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 They've always said that about us. <laughs> <laughs> both wearing the same sweaters, both a lot like Carrie Underwood. Not a gimmick, yeah. but uh, uh, just a fun little quality. <laughs> fun, fi- Yeah, everyone's always saying, like, both of their comedy is a lot like Carrie Underwood's voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Southern and uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And great in a TV production of The Sound of Music. Yeah, and anti vax. Mm hmm. I can't remember if Carrie Underwood was. Oh, no, that's my But dad. my comedy sure is. <laughs> but Claire Tony <laughs> super anti-vax. Yeah, Carrie Underwood's vagina, also non-binary. Yeah. 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 It's weird that, yeah, it's weird that all your punchlines are like, don't get the vaccine. <laughs> In my defense, it kills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Wow, that was... Oh, that was the joke of the night. That I think was that's it. how we segue into listeners. I think that is indeed right. how we do it. Are you ready for the shit? Let's do it. Let's do okay. it. Um, we have quite oh, received a text from Bernie Sanders. Oh. I got one as well. I love how close you two are. Yeah, he's always he's always writing to me asking. You for never $3. call. <laughs> <laughs> I I like that it starts the text with "Hey Gabby, it's Bernie." Dot dot dot. Okay. I got that. I got that as well. He's he's been he's been texting all his exes. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, a little bit ominous. Okay, oh, no. should I read the two part long one? Do it because it's actually not from a child. It's from a middle aged gay man. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I've recently, one month prior at time of writing, moved in with my boyfriend and consequently his housemate and said housemate's boyfriend. So there's four people in the house. Okay. They're all great fun to be around and largely pretty cool people. However, one of the guys, who I'm going to call Steve, is rather mercurial. Now, at the Good time word. of writing, he's just come into work and had a go at his other half about laundry or such sundry. Is that a British thing? Sundry? Yeah. Isn't that like snacks or something? Sundry is like assorted. Yeah. Sundry. Various. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Fitzgerald. <laughs> And it was clear to me that he decided he was going to have a ruck before. What the fuck? I'm sorry. A British, ruck? British is made up. Yeah. British I, is a made ruck, up. A ruck, I have never heard of. I've <laughs> never heard of that either. I was trying so either. hard to be like, yeah, yeah, these are words that are not in that common usage. But I know and ruck is made <laughs> the up. ruck is made up. Yeah, I'm reading it. I'm like, what the hell? All right, let's just read on. He's going to have a ruck before he'd even got in. He was projecting and really should see a therapist to teach him how to express his emotions more sensibly. Therapist? That's a made up word. And he should be told this. However, I don't have a good enough relationship with the man to bring it up, especially considering if it makes things awkward, I've still got to live with him. Any suggestions on a way I could broach the subject without that risk or any other ways I could help the man out? Sincerely, a bloke from the UK. Also, I love the podcast. Y'all are hilarious. I've got a holiday book to America in the summer, and I'm hoping to check out the NY comedy scene while I'm there, and oh. that it's as fun as you and all your guests make it seem. Oh, Aww. that's nice. I like that. Bloke. What was this submission about? Wait, yeah. Who was having, <laughs> was the housemate's boyfriend having the rock? It's either the housemate or the housemate's boyfriend. He didn't specify. It's about what to do, what to do and how to approach someone when they're having a rock. Okay. I'm looking up definition. Ruck, a tightly packed crowd of people. And w- <laughs> that can't be right. What are you, what are you doing? Um, you wait. got the voices. New there. Oxford American Dictionary. That's what it says. What was he projecting? Like what? What? What was the thing where the writer was like, "That was him projecting." I think it was when he had the ruck. He was projecting <laughs> about okay. his other issues. So you could say he was projecting the ruck. How would you deal with some a bloke having a ruck? <laughs> well, I definitely wouldn't say. You're projecting you should go to therapy. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> um, I would uh, 
probably the next day, considering that you're in the same space, so you're going to run into each other anyway. You don't need to make a, like, we need to talk time. Just be like, hey, just so you know, when you, uh, I felt blank when you behaved that way. I know that's not the impression that you're, like, meaning to put out, but that was how this affected me. Mm. No, that that's a, so that's a smart. very... I see yeah. this. Yeah. No, that's good. I I have no notes. I got cool. nothing to add. Yeah. Also, because I still don't understand the submission. <laughs> I th- that I think that is what the submission is asking is like how do you help when someone is yelling about some sundry? Mm. <laughs> Was there an element of the you say, question when you're, when you're talking w- about these sundries? What are you projecting emotions onto these sundries? How did how did this ruck affect the person who wrote in? Was it just like? this is someone who I think needs help and I want them to get help? Or was it like this negatively impacted me and I need something to be different for me? Let me go, let me go back to the source material. Um, I, I, I think it was that he is, I don't know, reading between the lines. Ostensibly, it's like I have to live with this person. So it's okay. like making it unpleasant. But I almost feel like maybe like he cares about the person who's being rucked at and – doesn't want him to be rucked out with sundry anymore. All right. Yeah. Yeah. In that case, you know, like, it's not your place to necessarily get involved in other people's relationships, but maybe tell the person you care about who is being treated poorly. Mm. Say to them, like, hey, how does, when this, does this happen a lot? How does it make you feel when this happens? And I, maybe. I just reread it, and I think it would be really funny if, if this listener and his boyfriend just like had a really like overtly healthy conversation about laundry as a way to model how it should go. <laughs> just like, <laughs> would you put these in the dryer, love? Yes, of course, love. Mwah. And then just put, and then, and it's just like really like so obvious. Yeah. All of which to say, don't ruck my rum. Don't ruck your rum. Are you Scooby Doo? <laughs> <laughs> don't ruck my rum. R- <laughs> All right, okay. next one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read I'm gonna read one. Okay. <clears throat> I absolutely hate showering. It's really <laughs> 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 But now on to the submission. Uh, <laughs> um I absolutely hate showering. It's really mentally and physically draining, and I have no idea why. Because of this, I, think I have you're wo- showering wrong. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear your take about this. I need to hear the rest of this. Because of this, I avoid and procrastinate showering all the time. It's really frustrating because I like being in the water, but because of how exhausting it is, it doesn't feel fun. I don't know why it is. uh, I don't know why this is what I... What? I don't know why this is what I put, but uh, help, I guess. Baths. Great. (laughs) (laughs) LMA, End of I don't discussion. know. Yeah. That was such a simple that was such a simple solution. <laughs> Why did you think this person was showering wrong? Um, if it's mentally and physically draining? Yeah. Maybe change the temperature so it's less scalding or freezing? Yeah. Mentally? <laughs> <laughs> they set up some trivia game in their shower. <laughs> <laughs> like screams things at them every yeah. time. Oh my god, this faucet the- is a Rubik's cube. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. <laughs> you cannot turn the water off unless you solve these riddles. <laughs> yeah, maybe find a shower that isn't guarded by a troll. <laughs> no, impossible. The shower is all works. The shower is hooked up to Wordle. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I would love that. Yeah, I'm a big Wordle head. As oh yeah, are you Wordle head? I haven't been as consistent lately, but I'm a big fan. I, I think it's. I think we've fallen off. Yeah, I think we've fallen off. Um, I have ooh. yet to lose. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's good. I also have yet to lose. I also. Yeah. But my girlfriend helps me sometimes. I also okay. have lost. Right. Um. Oh, I did once, and it was. I was very ashamed. Very, very ashamed. But uh, here's another. Hey, it's normal. It happens to everyone. Lucas is like, this never happens, it I swear. This never happens, I swear. I'm, I'm not like other guys. Uh, um, here's Okay, here's a quick one. Anyway, smash or pass, Buzz Lightyear, but the new one. Who's the new one? Pass. Pass? Mask. Two mask? Two mask. Okay. Have you not seen there's a new Lightyear movie? No. So like in the Toy Story universe, there's the Buzz Lightyear toy. That is based on, in that universe, a real astronaut. And so this is a movie about him that's coming out soon. Buzz Lightyear. And he's getting voiced by Chris Evans. Oh, uh, I, I find him quite handsome, actually. Yeah. For for a mask for a masculine fellow. Very masculine. Same sex kiss. 
Oh, yeah. Does Buzz do the I same sex kiss? Why do you think they call him Buzz? What do you, what think, do you think happens? <laughs> <laughs> he just turns into a vibrator midway through. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I don't know. He's a toy. <laughs> You think you think they're just cicadas, lesbians? <laughs> <laughs> Buzz. Okay, this is my favorite listener submission we've maybe ever gotten. Are you oh, excited? I'm ready. A couple nights ago, I was sucking a dick, and I looked up and realized that the guy was hitting his vape, and he did it like <laughs> thrice. And something about that really annoyed me, but I'm not sure what it is. What do you think it is? Wait, so he hit it th- thrice, three times mm-hmm. in. Oh my god. Well, yeah, it like signals that there are like he's thinking about other physical needs that he yeah. wants to get met rather than the one that you're very kindly meeting for him at that moment. Yeah, no, that's no. <laughs> you can't be vaping. That's no. like having a snack while you're getting a blowjob. <laughs> like focus on the physical desire that we're satisfying yeah. right now. Yeah. It's also just like be appreciative yeah. of this very nice act from a very nice person. Yeah. And it would never happen in reverse. You would never get a blowjob while you were, like, busy vaping. But that was exactly what was happening. I more meant, like, okay, he was incidentally vaping while he was getting his dick sucked. But if he, like, went out to vape and someone was just, like, incidentally sucking his dick, like... Wait, what? So wait, he leaves Wait, he leaves a blowjob to go vape, and right there is someone just magically sucking his dick again. Is I, that what you're saying? I more mean like, What does okay. his dick smell like that is getting sucked at this degree of frequency? Flowers. Beautiful thing. Blue cheese. It's delicious. <laughs> Everyone loves blue cheese. Who doesn't love blue cheese? I feel like, okay, like let's say you're at a dinner party. You don't go, like, let your dick be sucked at a dinner party. So if you're at a dick-sucking party, you don't go eat dinner while it's happening. (laughs) Right? (laughs) It's what Clara said. (laughs) But they said it more eloquently. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Are you okay, Lucas? A dick-sucking party? (laughs) You never go to a dick-sucking party? I've, I've never been invited. You ever go? No, I went to an orgy once. How was it? I didn't really participate. I just kind of hung out. Had a conversation. You were just there for the the chips. You had a conversation. What? So what's? (laughs) Is there like a conversation pit in the orgy? It's just sort of like this particular orgy. It's the only one I've been to. I have a sample size of one. Okay. There were people doing sexual acts in common areas. There were also other rooms that people could go into privately. Oh, okay. And there were also people having conversations in the common areas. And I did the conversation part and didn't do the sex part. This sounds like a party, but with uh, an orgy uh, subset. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sounds nice. That sounds actually, I, w- I would go I did, like, orgy for the vibe. It wasn't my favorite because it was like, it made me feel not picked. Mm. Um, but I have a feeling that's the vibe. I wasn't emanating a very down vibe. Interest. So, in your fantasy, did you want someone to be like, "Hey, you kid, you've got talent. Yeah. You're a star. Yeah, I know kid. You join that's the best orgy. thing to be yeah, called at an orgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of like, and that someone was what a young takes. Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kid, you got what it takes. <laughs> He fucks you while you're at the soda fountain in 1960s Hollywood. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, how did you know that this was in 1960s Hollywood? I just had a feeling (laughs) based on the anecdote, all the evidence surrounding. I had a feeling. Yeah. Well, we are coming towards the end of the podcast. And so we have a section that you probably know about from listening a little bit, which is self-perception corner. Would you please describe the way in which you feel you are perceived by other people? And then we will say how we actually perceive you. Great. I think I probably come off as like an odd mix of insecure and self-assured where I think I have kind of an uncomfortable vibe. Like nobody's ever offered me like fun drugs. <laughs> um, but I also think I come off as not necessarily needing a lot from other people, which would be per- uh, deceptive because I need so much from everyone all the time. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's I think kind of how I come off. What do you feel like you need from other people? Uh, love affirmation connection Mm -hmm. um sort of to bolster my worldview yeah that's super rare that anyone needs that yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. it's just this weird freaky thing about me nerd yeah Yeah. quirky quirked up 
What do you yeah. think, Lucas? You start up white boy yeah. um, <laughs> with a little bit of sauce. Um, what is that thing? The quirked up goaded with, with goaded with the sauce. That's it. Yeah. I'm not down with the kids. I only know about this from a Michael Candell, a uh, very talented comedian presentation okay. at Jonathan Van Halem, another talented comedian's mm-hmm. caveat show. Gotcha. Cool. Well, first off, I will say one. I'm just in awe of your talent. I think you're an extraordinary writer. Thank you. Second, I would say also just a very, very earnest and very kind person because pretty much unprompted you helped me put together a a halloween costume uh last october and i was so touched by that because i didn't know you that well at the time but i was like oh claire is really lovely i want to get to know them a little bit better and just every single conversation i've had with you i thought they're a sweetheart oh thanks yeah i had a very positive first impression of you because the way i met you was um my friend leo was in a band called the bluffs which is now disbanded they're working on other stuff but um leo was like I met this person, Clara, who just became, we became friends because they liked my music. And I thought that that was such a, it's such a nice and such a rare thing to be able to reach out to someone to be like, I like the work you produce. Let's be friends. Like that to me was a very, it spoke to what I like about being a creative person. It was like, you know, you, it's like that Chris Gethard rant he goes on about like meeting other creative people and like screaming into the void. Uh, you just made a gesture like Chris Gethard had died. I've been burping. Okay. And That's I was doing why you it had your hand over your chest and yeah, then no, like, I would, put it you, up. <laughs> would you never do like just like beat your chest a little bit to help it out? No, I'm not a like, fucking just, man. Yeah, you know, like I was burping. Yeah, I was, yeah. You, know, you ever just burp in the... Burping. Yeah, you... Yeah. Um, for those yourself. listening, I'm acting out various sort of ways of either threatening someone else's life or killing oneself. Yeah. Yeah, the, for those listening, they're actually doing it for real. They have, a gun to, they have a gun to my and Lucas's head. It's I awesome. love that also you're doing sort of subtitles for the audio version. That's great. Yeah, you're a very considerate person. Audio descriptions. That's the word I was looking for. Audio yeah. descriptions. And then I would say, and maybe this is a frustrating thing you get sometimes, but something comes to mind for you is like smart. Maybe that's just base level. Like, oh, like this person like, it says has interesting thoughts. So I think they're smart. But like, it does come to mind. Cool. Uh, yeah, I would co-sign on that for sure. Right, yeah, thanks. and em- empathetic. Oh yeah, and nice. Thanks. Yeah. Do y'all ever go mean on this part? You know, not ever. You're, people's first uh, perception of no- everyone is not nice. Can I tell you, there is someone we're trying. I can't say right now, okay. but who we're trying to get on the podcast, who we want to go in on. Someone who I messaged and I asked you permission about. Oh, I, well, yes. I haven't gotten a response yet. Oh, but um, there is some. I'll tell you afterwards. But there's someone who I who we both want to get on the podcast. Who we want to. It was a rar. while ago, but but, but uh, we we have. I I did say to someone once that I like could not read them at first. Okay. Um, I also just generally think the thing with self perception corner is that everyone just thinks they're perceived in these horrible ways, but like no one is just thinking that much about anyone else. But yes. like occasionally you'll have a negative first perception of somebody. But if I have a negative first perception of somebody, I never like them. Really? I mm. never come around. There's nobody who you've been like, ah, oh, I was a little quick to judge. Oh yeah, you know what? I have like a I have like a very good friend who I was a little quick to judge, but she's mm. been on the podcast, so what uh, you know. All right. I don't know. Do-, Do you know actually there is a comedian who I can think of. I won't say it right now, but there is someone who I honestly would actually love to have on this podcast, who the first time I met this individual, I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. And now I really like them. I really, really like them. What did you think of us? What did I think of y'all? Um, you, I first met you through Leo and like, you were like one of his favorite people. So oh, the, I so the him. thing I was going in with like, this is one of the best people. Aww. So when I met you, I was just like, yeah, Aww. Gabby's so cool. I'm meeting super cool Gabby. Oh my God. Stop. He's such a good dude. Aww. Love that kid. And then Lucas, we first, I first encountered you on one of the zoom mics. Uh, really? Yes. And we followed each this. other on Instagram. Okay. And then at one point at, by the tiny cupboard, I like said hi and was like, we met once and you did not remember me. <gasps> yeah, and then that happened one other time so Lucas that was so my aloof. first perception of you i'm so sorry that's all right i feel so terrible <laughs> i really do 
Sam Schaefer had the same thing. Sam Schaefer yeah. had had a, a slightly. He felt I had brushed him off because, and I had no memory of this. I I remember him introducing himself to me at Pine Box at your mic, uh, but there was a time where we were both at the tiny carpet and I just brushed him off and I apparently gave him a look. Oh, and that he was just like, oh, and and then Lucas is pretty evil looking as a guy. I I pretty evil looking. Do you know what's interesting is that I was once. I was once walking by Central Park and I was walking past uh, a friend of mine, a very old friend of mine from high school, walking with a newer friend of, of hers. And she had never seen me before. And she said uh, to my friend, uh, I'll say their name, M, but uh, they said, uh, she said to M, uh, yeah, he looks like he has a misogynist bone structure. And then M was like, holy shit, that's Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> I would know that bone structure anywhere. I would know that bone structure from beating me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think I have a misogynist bone structure? Those cheeks, those cheekbones want to regulate abortion. <laughs> <laughs> those cheekbones hate cancel culture. Let me tell you. <laughs> These cheekbones don't say gay. Uh, those cheekbones wrote the Barry Weiss letter. <laughs> <laughs> baritone wise <laughs> miss her every day clara this uh. has been an honor you've been so funny do you have anything to plug and promote i'm Hanukkah comedy every month at young ethels fuck yes beautiful and where can people find you on the socials at clara c-l-a-r-a olshansky o-l-s-h-a-n-s-k-y and it's that on all of them nice amazing do you have anything you want to plug Yes, I'm roasting the great Maddie Gross <gasps> at Grove 34 on May 4th. Oh, um, I, fuck. I want to see that, but I can't. Uh, Why? Because you hate non-binary people? I hate all of you guys. I hate all, everyone. Not just non-binary people. I comedians. Hate everyone. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> comedians. <laughs> doesn't support other people's no, live I have, I have a show myself that day. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. booked and busy and then i'm on uh their show are they you know uh on what is it may 12th i think i'm on that one too I'm oh my on, god so okay. exciting so is lucas yeah. we're all on that oh, one nice yeah i'm the i'm the token straight oh yeah you got yeah. you got anything lucas any i do any i have a i have a little shot stuff what's it, big shot stuff <laughs> i uh, hold on let me pull up my phone. that's how i feel about your career oh yeah so um uh may 4th I am at Sesh Comedy, uh, Terrence Hartnett's show. And then May 5th, I'm doing uh, Austin Nasso's show at Asylum NYC. And then May 11th, are they, you know, I'm doing that show with you lovely people. Very exciting. Uh, Clara just let out a... Oh, oh an another thing. Was it uh, a burp? Oh. It was an internal burp. It, <laughs> yeah. like, Aww. stayed there. It was a burp that has an avoided attachment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uses, like, these people haven't that earned my company yet. Yeah. yet. And uses she, the burp uses she, her pronouns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, burp, the burp has some real introspection to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> One other thing is also uh, my sketch group, 24-Hour Kiss Club, with previous guest Sam Schaefer. We have another show May 28th. Beautiful. And uh, tickets will be available soon, if not already available. I don't know yet. But yeah, they'll be there. Come, come around. But yeah, that's it. Clara, thank you so much for coming around. Thanks You've so been an amazing guest. This was so much fun. We've been, Lucas, do you just want to say it from your I stupid chair? I don't want to say a thing. I want you to do the honors, baby no, cakes. No, Lucas, you're in the chair. You're in the chair of shame. So you should say it. I'm gay. We've been yeah. two nosy meerkats. <laughs> We've been two nosy meerkats. Thank you guys for watching and listening. <laughs>